Hello, and welcome to the Pragmatic Live podcast series, where we tackle the biggest challenges facing today's product management, product marketing, and data-led professionals with some of the best minds in the industry. I'm Rebecca Calajaris, Vice President of Marketing at Pragmatic Institute, and your host for this episode. We've talked a lot recently about the importance of data in today's competitive landscape, and today we really wanted to take the conversation to the next level and talk with a company that is itself on this journey to becoming more data-driven and learn from their first-hand experience. So to help us do that today, we have Gabby Gilani, Senior Vice President of Financial and Strategic Analytics at Dime Community Bank. Hello, Gabby. Hello, Rebecca. How are you? I am excellent. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. All right. To start, why don't you tell the audience a little bit more about yourself and Dime Community Bank? Okay. So... Um, my name is Gavi Galoni, um, as Rebecca introduced. Um, I've been working at Dime for 20 years, first job out of college. Um, during my tenure here at Dime, um, I've uh, received my MBA in concentration in, fin in finance and in supply chain um, strategies. Um, during my time at, at Dime, my main, my main objective or my main uh, task was to do um, asset liability management which morphed into um, some data analytics required for uh, managing deposits, deposits, then went into treasury services, and also morphed into more data um, analytics. And eventually, uh, I've been uh, really moving out of the financial area of the bank and more into the data um, aggregation and, and data analytics of the institution. Great. So what, what sort of prompted you and, and the Dime Community Bank to really kind of focus on data? What were they hoping to accomplish? So, I mean, the biggest, uh, I think we've seen throughout the last, you know, 20 years um, that data has become such a major part of, uh, of a company. I mean, it's really, if you think about it, it is the big, probably one of the largest assets. Just look at Amazon, just look at other uh, companies that are out there. They gather all this data, um, and they're able to utilize this data by, you know, maybe even, you know, selling it off from their standpoint, but to also understand their customers. And for us, you know, one of the challenges for a, a bank is there's a lot of information. Um, there's a, a lot of reporting that needs to get done. And that's, and then and the biggest issues are around is that there's no real centralized location for a particular um, for, for, for this data. And in reality, we come to realize in order to really to perform uh, our um, objectives in efficiently, we need to gather the data into really a, a central location um, so that we can report easily, uh, whether it's for financial reporting, whether it's for uh, looking at our customer base, looking at maybe for fraud, all these other types of, 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 of tasks. And we want to realize that given our um, the software that we have or our third parties that we had, we weren't able to do that very, very well. Um, and, and additionally, some reporting was done through different departments where they categorized things a little differently than other, than other departments, which meant that the reporting was not necessarily, um, uh, you, know, you know, common in terms of the, um, Nothing really proved out. So we, that's another, you know, aspect of this particular, um, you know, why Dime went through this, went through this route. So it was really about how do you improve the business, understand the customers better, and engage with them. Yeah, it's definitely that. And also um, from a financial reporting, you want reports to not be generated. You, you want your, your accounting department to not be creating reports. You, want, you don't want your marketing people to create reports. You want to actually – reports to be there for them to view to make decisions. They're in the process of making decisions, not creating reports, and not even, I mean, it should be almost like they should be able to pull the report at any time they want. So what you know right now, every listener is nodding so hard because that is our dream, right? That instead of spending all this time trying to make the reports, I just get it. And then I can spend the time analyzing it and making changes based on it. That's, that is the dream. That's the dream. So um, you talked a little bit already about, but talk to me about the challenges that you've really come across on this journey. So one of the biggest challenges is really getting access to the data. Um, a lot of banks, I mean, uh, it, it, the biggest challenge probably is 
Um, you know, some of the technology partners that we, you know, they are with, they, there are um, there are issues of always uh, of actually getting access to the data. Um, sometimes it's it's it. Um, they they don't want to relinquish some of the um, the data to the the actual institution. Um, sometimes there's certain data they allow. Uh, some data they own they 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 actually look. Um, they try to hold on on how and how long you hold on to the data or what type of data there is. So that's it's probably one of the bigger the biggest uh, challenges that we have from that. So that's really from a technological standpoint. Some of the partners are not as um, willing to always make it easy for for the, for their clients to get access to all the data they need. Okay. And and additionally to that, uh, sometimes if the data is available, there's not a lot of documentation on uh, the back end of the the database, for example, um, and also with Integrating with your core provider can be also uh, somewhat of a of an issue mm. or challenge. Yep, yep. And even if, you'd, like you say, you get access and you can't, there's no documentation to help you figure it out. That can be, and I think that I know that you feel that very acutely in the in the financial and the banking space. But I think um, that's probably something we're all used to now. Sometimes it's our partners internally where we don't have permissions to access the data, not just external vendors where we'd love to get it. Um, but I think that's a, a, a big challenge. So what are some of the ways that you've come across or worked around this challenge? So, I mean, we've hired, um, uh, when, when I was tasked to really take over the data initiative, you know, we did hire um, a data scientist and a couple of data analysts. Uh, and one of the things we've done is, is we looked at, okay, let's look at the data that we have. Let's see how we can understand the data. So the, um, our, uh, the team, um, is very well versed in, in SQL, some in Python, for example, and they also have a good business knowledge, of, you know, about banking. Uh, and so, in reality, what we've done is that the team has actually looked uh, into the data sets that we are provided to understand them, and we have been able to uh, almost build our own data dictionary, you know, to a large extent, uh, to get a better understanding of the data. So that's the first thing that we've done. The second thing that we've done is from a challenge standpoint of migrating all the data and trying to um, make sure that we have access to the data when we need it, is that we decided that we need to create really a repository for it. So we really created our, or in the process of still creating a data lake. And data lake never really um, ceases, it always fills up. Um, let's put it that way. The data lake is really meant to just take the data in its raw, raw, raw form and bring it into an area. It could be the cloud, it could be on-prem. Um, and you know, that, that's, uh, that, that's, a whole tech, that's a whole other you know, discussion. But we want to get the data lake to be a place where we can bring all this data. Um, and then this data, once it's there, we're then able at our leisure to take a, take a look at it, to analyze it, to create maybe reportable data sets, you know, making our own data mart with what we want. So we're able to take the data that is that the, the core allows us to take. We take it, we can hold it on as long as we want to and we need to. Uh, and then we were able to create the data sets we need to, for reporting and to also support the business lines for opportunity. So that's really what the, the data lake you know, has, is, is supposed to be. In addition to that, as we said, once we build a data lake, you really need to build um, like a data mart, data warehouse that actually has the reportable data set. Data sets that has been cleaned, that's been normalized, that really if you really want any, any particular department, you know, wants to make a change to report, wants to build their own report, which really everything has been normalized from database standards, all natural keys, Everything is created there where they can produce with a reporting tools such as Tableau, maybe SSRS, um, and being able to uh, create maybe a quick report that would really be um, equal to anything you get from all the departments, because all using the same data set throughout the entire organization. Wow, so there's there's a lot to unpack there and, and um, you know, you did a great job of explaining it so it sounds easy and, and I know that is not easy. And 
that is a very big project. Um, so let's talk through a couple different things. One, you made a point of saying that your data scientists and your data analysts not only had uh, technical skills required, but that they understood the business sides of it. Did they come with banking information? How important was that to you? Did you guys um, train them up on that or how did that work? Right. So um, one of the uh, data scientists had some uh, worked in finance for about a year or so, uh, and also has a uh, and also has an economic degree. So understood the, the financial world. So did understand um, the various needs of a uh, finance. So it's not banking per se, but definitely understood the the definitely the framework of of a banking framework. Um, in addition, data analyst has had an MBA as well, uh, and so she also had the ability to understand the business. Um, but of course, there's always training. There's always, right. you know, you, you always have to sit with the business line to understand exactly what you're doing. But they had a framework to work with. Well, I would, I would imagine that's a, a big advantage to turn that, you know, understanding the framework of it, understanding what information might be valuable. I could see that would be very useful. But Rebecca, I agree with you 100%. One of the things we have done, but you know, when you look at the, your building a team, you know, you also have to look at budgets and see what you have available. Yes. Uh, you know, a lot of da the data, the data um, analytic schools, for example, they may be working more on the marketing side or more just on esoteric type of projects, uh, machine learning projects, for example, um, that really in reality, they may not have the financial experience, but you need to have at least one or two people on your team that have that framework so they can, um, you know, at least train and work with the other individuals. One of the things that I have working in the bank for 20 years, I've been really involved with almost the entire department. I mean, our bank started at $4 billion. Of, uh, when I was there, two, $3 billion of assets. We're now over $6 billion. And I've been here, through, you know, you know, seeing the, the bank evolve over time, know a lot about the, the finance, the economics of the bank that can actually, and the data, to mm -hmm. be able to really make a decision. So I'm also, like, very much involved. If you had someone just came in, and actually would not have any big experience to do this, it would be very tough unless there needs to be someone on the team who definitely has that experience, must have that experience. That makes a ton of sense. So then you take, so you bring these people in, you bring all the data into the data lake, so I just picture it pouring in there, and then you talked about normalizing it. I know sometimes that's called data wrangling, and I suspect from different sources that was a big project. What kind of timelines are you talking about for both kind of building the lake and then normalizing the data in a way that then can actually be reported off. Right. So um, the the building of a data lake right now, um, it, the way we're doing it, we're doing it with, with, with SQL Server, we're doing it on-prem. There are definitely a lot of, um, what we understand and what we've done research on, there are definitely a lot of the uh, uh, cloud providers that do this, you know, very, very quickly. Um, but from a, from a standpoint of, you know, what, how we're doing it, uh, and doing it on-prem using SQL Server, it's really probably about it's um, to build the architecture first and making sure we we're able to download all this data from Fiserv, you know, from our core provider to, um, you know, you know, to, to on-prem. You have to make sure that all the links work, everything works properly, because there could be a situation where, for example, the core may shut off if you're hitting the database too much, um, or in a situation where, you know, you, 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 you have a program that actually runs to download data and, and one of it, you know, fails, you have to make sure that, there, that, that the data doesn't get corrupted or doesn't affect the tables that you have already built in the data, in the data lake. So really it requires uh, design, thinking it through. It's about, you know, three to six month, you know, process to do this right, to do this right. Now, in terms of the data mart and the data mart and the normalizing the data, so once you really understand and you work with the data, you start to know, okay, this is what you have to design what are the, going to be the main reportable data sets that everyone wants to see. So for our bank, our average balances, average rate, um, the ending balances, of course, and then from a, from a, 
that that's on the financial side, on the marketing side, understanding the age of the customers. And you also, all that has to be done in a, in a, in a, in a way that is well organized. Because one of the things we said, you want, if someone has to build a report from scratch, it should not be, you, you shouldn't have to know SQL. You should be able to say it's a reporting tool. I may need to know basic Excel and just drag and drop to be able to say, okay, everything is linked properly. And also that to make sure that the tables that it's being um, hit against, that, that, that the efficiency of, of running the data is actually, um, is actually pretty efficient. So that really um, comes with, when you design a data lake, you're also gonna be designing a data warehouse as well. So in that sense, um, you know, we're still in the process actually of building as we call an ODS, an ODS, um, which is the data mart, and that is always continuing because you always want to you always want to improve the efficiency efficiency of this. Since you have the data already in the data lake, and you have this at you know from the time that you you started it, you're able to go back in time and make some changes to the actual um, you know data mart to reflect what you need. So we're in the process, you know, we anticipate that as we have a full group actually working on it, you know, that really should take about two months time. Okay. And then um, at the end, so the amazing thing is everyone's looking at the same data, which would solve a, a ton of problems. But then also you talked a little bit about sort of set reports that you would do, but then giving them tools so that they could build their own. Because I do find that you know, once you give someone a report, it just leads them to the natural next questions, which requires a different report. So have you done, are you guys looking at off the shelf sort of BI tools or are you building an interface or how are you guys gonna uh, kind of empower the users to pull the information they need? So we, we are looking at, um, you know, Tableau, for example, is a, is a perfect example. Uh, we are, we have been looking at that. We've actually, you know, we are uh, somewhat of a, a SaaS shop ourselves. So we also have SaaS Visual Analytics. Uh, and we also have SSRS, which comes with SQL Server. Um, mm -hmm. We're planning to um, really, in, in, at first, because of this governance, making sure that entitlements are, um, are aligned with our entitlements for other uh, of our software, because again, bank, you know, there's some confidential data. We have to make sure that the entitlements are, are, are aligned. So we would probably just run out push. But the software we'll probably use is most likely um, a Tableau seems to be the industry standard. We'll probably go into in, into that, but in the meantime, we'll probably use uh, somewhat of an SSRS um, um, and or SAS Visual Analytics uh, type of platform. We haven't really, um, you know, decided on that yet. Although right right now we're doing a lot more SSRS. Okay, that makes sense. And then. Um... Can you talk a little bit about the types of projects you're, you're putting up against this first? Right. So initially, about a few years ago, when we, we created the, uh, the, the, the uh, data department, we actually uh, we wanted to try to score our customers, uh, specifically our really more deposit customers. It's been very difficult, in, especially in, in some areas. So we are in the New York area, very, very, very highly competitive market to really understand how we should, um, um, you know, who we should give a rate to to our, our customers. And so we decided we need to take, figure out something to give our branch staff, the retail staff, to be able to work with. Is this customer someone we should be considering um, to, to, uh, to be considering a, a, a higher rate? So the, um, given that the, uh, what we've done is we've looked at certain criteria of, uh, of the scoring model, such as um, you know, what type of uh, accounts they have, if they have a checking account, what type of activity they're doing, do they have direct deposit, do they use a direct deposit, do they do bill pay, do they have check, you know, do they, do they, do they, do they write checks? We wanna look at the, the activity on these accounts. And that means that if they do a nice amount of activity, uh, they, are, they are actually you know, like a PFI, a primary, primary financial institution. So we've done there is we've looked at and that as one example. And so we've, we developed this and we've run it, we've run this through before we even created the data lake into Microsoft Access, you can imagine that. Um, but now we're trying to bring this into using a data lake, which will have more information, more 
components and more criteria to be able to, to score our customers even better. So that's one. That's one. The second thing is just report tracking. I mean, right now we are, even with our limited da data lake right now, with, and with data sets that we do have available, we're, we're actually sitting every day um, report tracking of our, um, you know, retail deposits. You know, seeing which branches are losing deposits, um, what is the average cost, we know what products are taking, where we see variances, and we even go down on a ch on a checking level of saying we could go down on, could go down even further, but for at least um, for purposes on a daily basis, we show every how many withdrawals occurred in a particular product, how many uh, new deposits, how many new new accounts were opened, how many were closed. And so it gives the, our retail administration the ability to go and speak with the branches and say, oh, oh what happened with this customer? Um, additional thing we created is um, there's really not, we don't have a real CRM right now. And so we've created a, a, um, a report that actually is sent to the branches every single day. Again, it's uh, written in Python, actually. The larger leverage is written in Python. And it's, what it does is it provides the branch to enter in uh, through a drop-down box, uh, what's, you know, if we see activity, let's say, of uh, a certain dollar amount or more on a given day, we, they have the opportunity to, to go into those accounts and take a drop-down box of why this activity happened. Was it business as usual? Was it that the money left because it was a better rate and money come in because they, uh, they, they, they opened up, uh, you know, a relationship? So that's something else that we've done. And, and we're pushing through in the, in the data lake. The other thing um, is building relationships. One of the hardest things without a real CRM right now is building relationships. So we've created using um, the many different roles that we have in our core provider of saying, uh, of providing our branch staff the ability to say here, this we think this um, group of customers represents some type of relationship. And they can then now go in and identify, yep, these accounts are. We're going to identify a relationship in the system. So we're helping our branch staff create relationships, which would make it easier to know, wow, you know, this customer by itself, it's more than just householding because householding looks at an address. This is, you know, since we're becoming more of a business bank, we, we need to see that the, the business, the, 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 the personal accounts or the, or the principal owners on the accounts and all the entire relationship. And be able to see what, are the, what is this relationship worth to us, which leads us to the net last thing is really is profitability. You know how profitable are these customers, and how profitable are are, are our departments. So we we you are using the data from the data uh, lake to be able to um, or to actually be able to do this, um, and that's really what the you know you know what we are planning to do. And there's other things they're planning on doing as well once we. This could be the, the data sets we, we provide can be used for, load, you know, could be used for loading up our, our CRM once we decide on which one we want to use um, for other types of, um, of third party software like our loan origination systems. Um, that's what we are planning to do. So there's a lot of other projects that this can be used for. Um, and that's really why, you know, why the advantage of having everything centralized is definitely, definitely the, an advantage. Absolutely. What are the uh, initial responses from some of your partners in the business to what they've been able to do even at this early stage? Oh, I think they've been very, I mean, for this, they've been, the, the, our, our business lines have been, uh, you know, very, very, very uh, happy with uh, some of the information. Just, uh, just today, uh, you know, we, we, we went through some reports showing um, um, the people didn't necessarily realize that some of those reports even existed because we, we sent it out to a, a group of people, but once we explained this, oh wow, we have this, that's so great. We were able to see what's happening to our branch on a daily basis. We understand which, what accounts are driving, what accounts are not driving. And so they, they love it. And uh, in addition to that, um, you know, we, we, uh, we are looking at a CRM and we have my, my team in IT working together of figuring out how we would actually build this CRM. So. The IT and the, the and I mean, believe me, our retail retail division so badly wants a CRM that you know they're ecstatic at what we you know what we we're able to you know you know to do. Um, in addition to that, um, you know, definitely uh, you know our CEO is very happy with the fact we're able to build profitability reports uh, for the for the different departments. 
and that has been um, you know definitely very very much uh, well, well received. That's awesome, and I think you brought up something there that sometimes uh, during these larger data projects or technology projects we forget, and that is to show the business side some of the successes along the way, right? I mean, Definitely. it's not the full end tableau, but when you can show them those kind of reports, you just build excitement and their investment in making sure you have the resources you need. That's correct. Awesome. All right, so this has been great, and I love, I love hearing someone who's actively going through this. If you could go back in time to when you started this journey um, and tell yourself, you know, one or two things that maybe you wished you knew up front that you're like, oh, yeah, what would, would those be? Well, I think from the, uh, from the beginning, um, one of the things I think you do really need, first of all, you need to have, uh, you know, you need to have a database like engineer to really, really help from the beginning uh, because database engineer is someone um, that really understands um, how to build um, a database infrastructure, understands what's the best, you know, methodology. Some, you know, especially now with, you know, a newer um, deposit engineer. I mean, the database engineer would actually be someone who knows the cloud um, environment very well. Uh, and maybe that if we had that person initially, that would actually be someone um, that we, we we may have decided to go in the cloud. Although that. To be honest, you know, the cloud is a, for a financial institution is a little bit more of a, you know, of a discussion because it's more of an enterprise discussion whether or not, um, you know, your security is, is okay with it, does your, uh, your audit department and, you know, there's a whole entire, you know, it's almost a cultural change for that. So that's, but still, that person there, and then once you have that person, that person can provide the framework and then everyone else just builds because once you are, if a data, if you're a data analyst, you know, and you usually know SQL already. You have, um, and if you're definitely a senior data analyst or some data science, you definitely know, you know, the Python and, and other languages to assist of building these, you know, these data sets. So that would be one thing that for sure. Um, and I, I guess the the other thing um, that you know would have been very helpful. It is so it's always having more people <laughs> you know <laughs> in the project uh budget is a thing is a, you know to really uh, to, to me when you start a project um you need to have the the full buy-in from the company where you are able to maybe have a little bit of extra fat i always consider i use i always use the baby as an example baby you want the baby have that baby fat in the beginning and eventually they grow out of it so the fact is sometimes uh, I think when you've been doing these projects, um, there are situations where to have a little bit of fat is very, is very helpful um, because you just will sh you should grow out of it. You don't want to have you know, the wrong fat, but you want to have the, the, the good fat. Um, and, and I think the last thing is um, another approach we could have taken is getting more of a <clears throat> third party to assist us um, and to, uh, to, uh, to help us further, I think that's a very important to looking at vendors and using a combination of maybe individual contractors and uh, maybe even a third party to assist. Uh, I think a nice mix would actually, you know, would have been helpful. Well, I think, and a lot of that it makes sense. For anytime you have a big project um, and you're trying to prove it out, you, you end up starting a little lean, both maybe internally and externally. And I think your point there is if, if you can, even if it seems a little more than you need, you can make so much progress and you got some different point of views that it can be worth the investment, even if it feels early to the organization. That's correct. Awesome. So um, I know you're in the middle of this journey. Do you have a, an exciting next step that you see? Is it, is it really focusing on building out more of those reports like we talked about in the interfaces? Or are there well, other I think it, Yeah, so I think it's the next step is looking at um, a CRM um, and seeing how we can help um, really excite our um, business um, business lines about that, and then I think really once you have the data lake, you really need to look at enterprise uh, data management. I think that's a very important part of the journey. Um, and I think that uh, although that again, I'm, the difference is that I'm not part of the you know the IT side. I mean, I'm not a um, you know a hardware or more of a technical um, individual. I'm more of a data analytics side. So really, you have to work now with the the technology department 
to see how we can improve our communication between, um, uh, you know, D Dime and our third party through like APIs and other types of integrations that would actually make really help um, our departments become more more efficient. You don't want to you want to be able to figure out ways of how to load information into our core more um, more efficiently. Um, and APIs is, would be a great thing if you're able to have great APIs from our load origination systems and other areas. Maybe even when, a, when our business bankers are, or our bankers are meeting clients, uh, you need to have the ability for them to, uh, maybe using, a, um, for example, um, an iPad or something, a tablet, to be able to um, enter information in and goes directly into a database. And then that, through that database, the API is, takes it and puts it into our you know, core. So I think that's really what uh, we want to do next to see how we can help with that. Uh, other projects could be uh, that we're looking is bringing external sources in to Don. So one of the things that looking at social media, um, Google Analytics, uh, anything we can to bring data in to maybe able to enhance the data that we have already. With data science, uh, data, data analysts and data scientists, um, they'll be able to run you know, specific algorithms to be able to see if how these, if we can, you know, match up some of the the social media um, with this, um, you know, with our current data. So that's really what is going to be the next steps for us. Great, Akavi, this has been really interesting, um, and I actually I hope you come back, you know, further down on your journey too, and keep us updated on how it's going. I think this provides a really good point of view of how this is working today and how you guys are, are using this to kind of improve the customer journey, understand your business more, and then all the different pieces that come into this. I mean, like I get, I said earlier, but you do a really good job of, of defining what has to happen in a way that almost makes it seem easy, and yet I know it's not, and I know you've made a ton of progress in this area. Yes, I think we have, and we're looking to make more progress. As we said, this is, an, this is a journey, and it never really ends because it's always more data to, to obtain. Yes, <laughs> unlimited data. All right, Gabby, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you. All right, that does it for today's episode. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And don't forget to join us next week when we tackle another great topic designed to help you elevate your product, your company, and your career. <laughs>